Let us start with the first condition here. This is Fordyce's granules. Fordyce's granules, we know they are the ectopic sebaceous glands and we can see them on the buccal mucosa. If you can look at the picture closely and in the exam, if they ask you about the treatment of it, it is no treatment required. Now, the next condition we have student is Luke edema. For Luke edema, you should remember that uh, number one, you will see it bilaterally on both the side of buccal mucosa and it can come under differential diagnosis of your white lesions. And the most important, how you differentiate Luke edema from leukoplakia is a stretch test. So when you stretch it, Luke edema is going to disappear, but the leukoplakia white patch will be still there. So it is again a normal variant and no treatment is required. You can look at the picture here. We will see a filmy white opalescence here on the buccal mucosa. Bilaterally, it is seen. Now let us talk about Varices. Varices, students, are the abnormally dilated. Now, student, let us talk about varices. So, varices, students, are the abnormally dilated veins we have. So, if you look at the picture here, so on the tongue, you have the sublingual veins. You can see how they are abnormally dilated. Also, you can see the varices here on the upper lip and they can get thrombosed and get calcified as well. In older people, elderly, we can see uh, the varices more frequently. The sublingual varices, this condition is also called as a KVR tongue. You can see all the varices here, abnormally dilated wing. The next one students we have is the geographic tongue. The geographic tongue students have different names like you have benign migratory glossitis, arrhythma migrans. Why it is called as a geographic tongue? Because if you look at the appearance of the tongue here, you can see a patchy appearance, right? So this is more actually clear in this. So it look like a map you can see what has happened here in this red area the desquamated area you can see the filiform papillae they have desquamated on these zones give it a mappy appearance it is called as aridma migrans because these patches they appear they heal spontaneously they disappear and then they reappear as if they are migrating on the tongue that's why it is called as the geographic tongue geographic tongue student is having a red and white patches on it because of atrophy of filiform papillae and white patches appear because of the keratin deposit usually asymptomatic but patient may uh, feel the sensation of soreness or burning but if it becomes symptomatic for the patient you can give steroid mouth rinses like dexamethasone most commonly you can see it on dorsum of the tongue but other areas can also be affected now you look at this, this is torus palatinus condition, the tori. Always remember students, tori, they are not pathological. But if they are interfering with your denture seal or they become ulcerated, patient has difficulty with speech or patient is just cancerophobic, he doesn't like the big growth on his palate, you may have to remove the tori. They are exhaustosis, bony growth. So you can see torus palatinus in that picture and this is torus mandibularis. The torus mandibular students always remember it is bilateral and you see it mainly in the canine premolar area and if you look at the picture here now let us talk about some racial pigmentation so you can see here afro-american uh, students uh, will have more uh, physiologic or melanin pigmentation in darkened skin individual you can see the picture this is called as physiologic pigmentation or melanosis then we talk about the ankyloglossia. Ankyloglossia student is a tongue tie condition. A child with overdeveloped lingual frena, which is tying the tongue to the floor of the mouth. This child will have speech as well as digestive difficulty. The treatment is to cut the frena that is called as phrenectomy. Phrenectomy and phrenotomy are also important topic that we take in oral surgery. Now student, let us talk about cleft lip and cleft palate. Very important condition of exam. And uh, we already discussed it in detail in your pediatrics videos. Cleft lip mainly happened due to failure of fusion of medial process with the mastery nasal process. And cleft palate due to failure of two palatine shells together. Mostly the cleft lip happens unilaterally. But sometimes you can see the cleft lip on both the side. Then you can have cleft lip and cleft palate combined too. And both the conditions can also happen isolated. Like isolated cleft palate or isolated cleft lip. You can see the condition here of the child with unilateral and bilateral and here if you look at the picture closely on the panel you can see this is the cleft in the palate that can be seen on the pano x-ray 
So if we talk about, you can see other crop pano occlusal pictures as well, which are clearly showing the clefting in the palate. You can see this is the cleft, this is the cleft here. When we talk about the cleft palate condition, mainly the problem with the cleft palate, children, they have velopharyngeal incompetence. That is difficulty because there is a cleft in the palate. There is an inability of the soft palate to close the opening of nasopharynx. These children with a cleft palate, they will have speech difficulty, swallowing difficulty, and that is the main indication for their surgery. Now, when we talk about the white lesions, it's very important for us to know differential diagnosis of the white lesions because there are many conditions that will appear white. You have leukoplakia, leukedema, aspirin burn, candidiasis. Looking at the radiograph or looking at the clinical picture of any condition, we cannot say for sure what condition it is. So we have, must go for the differential diagnosis. We have to do the definitive diagnosis that we can only do by doing the biopsy. Now, this is called as morcito baccarum condition like the cheek chewing. If you can look at the picture here, lip biting habit can lead to morcito laborum and tongue biting lead to morcito lingurum. You can see the white rougher surface and you can see the lesion here. Now white sponges nevus student is a genetic condition, it's autosomal dominant. When there's genetic mutation of keratin production, it's multifocal and there's extensive thick white folds of the tissue which are present here. You can see the picture here. So in the white sponges nevus, you see thickened white corrugated velvety appearance of the diffuse plaques. And you see it bilaterally in the buccal mucosa, but you can also see on the ventral surface of tongue, labial mucosa, or also on the floor of the mouth. The next condition, students, we have linea alba. So linea alba, you'll see a white line that is running at the occlusal plane, white linear thickening. If you look at the picture closely, you will see. So this is the linea alba. You can again see it bilaterally. These conditions do not require any treatment until they are symptomatic. Let's see uh, the next condition student that is hairy leukoplakia. Hairy leukoplakia will mainly see the growth on the lateral surface of the tongue, the white growth. And it is seen mainly in the HIV patient. Very, very important in immunocompromised patient. And uh, the virus that is involved in the etiology of leukoplakia, hairy leukoplakia is Epstein-Barr virus. The hairy leukoplakia is something called as the AIDS defining illness. Hairy leukoplakia, extra pulmonary tuberculosis, Kaposi sarcoma, they are considered to be AIDS defining illnesses. The patient, it presents, uh, he presents to your office with any of these conditions, you must tell the patient to go for HIV testing because 99% of patients suffering from these conditions, which are AIDS defining illnesses, they have HIV. You can see some more pictures of oral hairy leukoplakia here. Now the next condition students we have is hairy tongue. So don't confuse hairy leukoplakia with hairy tongue. Hairy tongue condition mainly it is seen in smokers or patients with the bad oral hygiene. So you will see that there is overgrowth of filiform papillae hair. And these overgrown filiform papillae is giving a furry appearance, a hairy appearance to your tongue and they can get discolored by the food or the organic color in the food pigments. The treatment is just to improve your hygiene. A lichen planus students, we know it's a very important condition. It's an autoimmune condition. So always remember autoimmune conditions are more common in females, middle-aged and elderly. So lichen planus can be characterized by 4P, purple, polygonal, pruritic papule. Pruritic is the itchy papule. And mainly there are two varieties of lichen planus. We have the reticular variety and the erosive variety. The reticular variety is definitely more important. It is called as Wickham striae most important manifestation of reticular lichen planus where you see white lacy pattern and it does not rub off usually asymptomatic while erosive pattern you can see more painful ulcerations all over the mouth if you look at the picture here the middle-aged females are affected more and you can see the patches of the lichen planus polygonal plaque appearance purple and if you look at this picture see here we can clearly see the white lacy pattern that are the Wickham stri white lines. You can see some more pictures of the reticular variety, which is more commonly asked in the exam. There are some pictures of the erosive pattern too, when the oral mucosa is getting desquamated, which is a painful condition, less common than the reticular variety. White lesions which are asymptomatic, they don't be treated. Otherwise, when the conditions become symptomatic, you have to give topical steroids to the patient. 
Now we come to nicotine stomatitis. Very important condition, students. It is always asked in the exam. Nicotine stomatitis, also called as smoker's palate. This is the only condition caused by smoking which is not pre-malignant. All other conditions that you see due to smoking are pre-malignant. That means this condition happened due to smoking, due to pipe smoking mainly. So you see the lesion on the palate. If you stop smoking, the palate is going to become normal again. It is a reversible condition. What you see in smoker's palate or nicotine stomatitis, if you look at the picture closely here, you see on the palate, there is red areas which look inflamed, which are actually the blocked duct or minor salivary glands in the palate. The appearance of nicotine stomatitis is also very important. Now we are coming to a very, very important condition of exam, canidiasis, because you can always come across a canidiasis patient in your dental office. It is the most common oral fungal infection that can be seen. But you have to remember that candida is a normal inhabitant of your oral cavity. But when your immune becomes low, when you're immunocompromised, like in diabetic patient, leukemic patient, HIV patient, the same candida is going to cause infection. That's why it is called as an opportunistic fungus. So it has a classic variety when you see an oral thrush or acute pseudomembranous candidiasis. But you have the red varieties too, like you have acute erythematous candidiasis, chronic erythematous candidiasis, or chronic hyperplastic candidiasis, dentist stomatitis is also called as dentist sore mouth or median rhomboidlocytis. So if you look at this here, this is the classic variety we have. So you can see the white patch here, oral thrush, and when you rub it off, it will be able to rub. That means once you rub it off, the lesion scrapes out and leave a red paste. That's one comparison with the leukoplakia, which does not rub off. It's going to be a painful condition, acute pseudomonas candidiasis once you rub off. Acute erythematous candidiasis, you see, red lesions here so also called as antibiotic sore mouth because overuse of antibiotic will also decrease your immune and can lead to candidal infection generalized pain burning and arrhythma most commonly due to broad spectrum antibiotics you can see the red variety of candidiasis here right erythematous candidiasis while the chronic erythematous candidiasis you see mainly in the denture varus also called as denture stomatitis or denture sore mouth you will see the redness on the denture bearing mucosa here. So if the patient is wearing denture all day, not removing in the night time, bad hygiene, they are the common reason of denture sore mouth. This condition actually students can be completely uh, asymptomatic for the patient. Patient might be wearing this denture for several years or maybe very slightly symptomatic. Turns symptomatic, pain burning, that's when patient is going to come to you. Now, if you look at the other condition, this is called as angular colitis. You see that? There's a cracking at the angle of the mouth. Mostly, it happens in uh, denture where when you have decreased VDO, when the VDO that you calculated for the patient is less than the normal, decreased vertical dimension of occlusion, there will be overclosure of mouth and that will lead to angular colitis. It can be infected by candida. Now, median rhomboidlocytis, don't confuse with the geographic tongue. Because here you just see a single patch, but in geographic tongue, there were multiple red and white patches. You see just a single lesion here, a rhomboid lesion in anterior to the circumvallate papillae that is present on the posterior part of the tongue. And uh, the reason behind is the chronic candida albicans infection can lead to median rhomboid glossitis. Now you can see the chemical or uh, the heat burn. Most common we see the aspirin burn. Because aspirin student, that's the reason we dissolve in water and then you take it. The reason is that if you take tablet of aspirin directly and you put it near to your mucosa while swallowing it, it can burn your oral mucosa leading to necrosis of the oral mucosa. This is the aspirin burn, the white lesion that you can see due to the burn. The next one students we have is the scarlet. Scarlet fever, if they ask you the most important is the strawberry tongue here. So we know scarlet fever is caused by group A streptococci and the oral manifestation having a strawberry tongue appearance. So you can see hyperplastic fungiform papillae here, white coating, start with and then it turns red. 